when hope is gone, undo this lock and send me forth on a moonlit walk. Release restraint level zero. Dead body. Hi guys, this is the Void of the Ravenclaw. Welcome back to another fan freaking story. If you like this type of content, smash the like button and subscribe for future updates that I post on my community tab frequently. As we start our story in the vast desert of Egypt, as you see a group of tra tra um, traveling treasure hunters traveling through the vast desert of Egypt going even deeper into the forest in hopes of finding an ancient city that was that was that was lost in time according to legends the pharaoh of this lost kingdom was so powerful that the sands of Egypt was under his command including his entire bloodline. According to the legend, they were born by the sand itself. But most people believe it's just a legend. Nothing more, nothing less. But these treasure hunters are not so certain. They found evidence of, the, of a unique relic scattered all around Egypt. Each relic has one thing in common. Some sort of hourglass symbol was carved into the objects. The treasure hunters spotted a humongous cave in the distance, so they decided to use that cave to bunker down for the night. Once they entered the cave, they noticed it wasn't connected to any cave system. It's just a huge chain. It's just it's just a huge cave chamber. In the middle of the chamber, there are stone pedestals in the shape of Chikaku, scattered all around. A large stone, all, well, all around on the large stone floor. In the middle of the large stone, in the middle of the floor is a huge stone tablet ancient writing was carved into the stone on top of on top of the cave um, stone top of the cave well sorry the stone tablet there is a symbol of a hourglass carved into it in go in gold coloring as all the treasure hunters got excited seeing the stone tablet, it began to light all the torches all around the wall of the cave chamber to get a better look at everything. Nothing out of the ordinary was noticed besides the black, black sand covering the whole chamber. Concealing most of the stone floor that was built in the cave, Half of the treasure hunters examined the, examined the ancient tablet, while the other half set up camp in the chamber. The only big area that they could see that wasn't covered in sand. There are small pockets of the floor scattered all around. As this, they decided to set their camps in the largest area. and made a small campfire to cook on and to keep them w warm when night finally hits. It gets extremely cold in the desert during nighttime. These men are fully aware the days in the desert are extremely hot, but at night it gets extremely cold. People die in the desert daily if they're not proper, proper prepared 
for the harsh cli uh, climates and the deadly sandstorms often occur in the desert when night finally when night fell the treasure hunters all turn in for the night unfortunately for them their trail was noticed by the blood blood hourglass cult that uh, that once served the ancient kingdom kingdom of the hourglass following the trail to a ritual cave they've been looking for for generations as the cult members slowly lurk into the humongous cave entrance to see the treasure hunters fast asleep one of the cult members threw a homemade smoke bomb that has some sort of knock knockout effect in the gas once the smoke bomb went off it didn't take long for all the treasure hunters to fall unconscious as the cult members begin to bind the treasure hunters with rope and gather them, gathering them all up in the middle of the room ready for the blood ritual the cult the cult leader is driven to bring back the good old days where where their religion were on top instead of being outed as devil uh de of uh, a cult well, a devilish cult the methods are extreme even outright disturbing to most people then mentioning mentioning the name of the cult brings fear to people's hearts they might be a small cult they might have a small following now but their numbers are increasing over the generations the cult members place all of the treasure hunters in the middle of the stone floor that's in the cave each cult member form a circle around the treasure hunters and begin to chant while the cult leader is speaking in an unknown language as he pulled out a dagger and a vial of blood that has ancient runes engraved onto it keeping the blood fresh by a uh, method of magic This vial blood has been protected in their cult for generations. It's the blood of blood that this vial contains is the bloodline of the Pharaoh's family line. As the cultists begin their ritual. The moment the blood touched the black sand, the ritual was complete. The moment he shoved his dagger through the heart to one of his fellow ritual uh, fellow clansmen, not really clansmen, I don't know what they call them, for of the cult, the black sand suddenly came to life, start to consume the treasure hunters, crushing them. The Black Sand immediately went on to, to attack and killed all of the cult members, consuming them as well by crushing them and absorbing their blood into the sand. With everyone dead in the cave chamber, the Salan slowly start to form and Anifa slowly start to form into a little boy as Gara opened his eyes for the very first time. Gara seems to be around the age between four or five years old by appearance alone. Gara produces black sand, cover his body from neck to, to his feet by creating clothes instantly as he has a full and has a full full awakened chakra network 
Gar has a small chakra reserve for now. As he grow, his chakra reserves will as well. Garl walked out of the cave and looked into the look at look into the sky to see the moon blood red. The moment Gara's was born, several sandstorms begin to rage all all around Egypt. In response of his of his birth, Gara took what supplies he could could skit on. Um, could um, gather around the chamber before he ventured further into the desert. Gara saw a oasis in the distance while he has a backpack with food and other supplies to survive. Gara arrived at the oasis. He walked towards the water and stared at his, at his reflection. As he sees the appearance with his red hair, pale blue eyes, and the red and circles under his eyes like he's wearing an eyeliner, and the kanji for love on the right side above his, above his eye on the side of his face. You see the pale eyes staring at his, at, at his reflection in the water with no emotion on his face. Gara saw people in the distance heading towards toward, uh, towards, uh, towards the oasis that he's currently at. As, the, as black sand erupted from Gara's body, like it had a mind of his own, killing all the nearby predators that were lurking behind Gara, killing several several coyotes that roams the desert. As Gara stares at the black sand, I see you must be mother. Mother, do you want their blood as well? Being how young he is, seeing the blood, the sand protect him in such a matter, he mistook the sand as his actual mother. In truth, it's just his advanced bloodline protecting him on his own accord, or the sand for protect him on his own accord. Ara's bloodline has evolved so much over the over the centuries. Over the time, the family line has been alive, as it upgraded and had and and acquired new abilities. That the original holder of the bloodline wasn't able to do. Garo was insulted by flashes of memories, techniques, instantly, and knowledge. Gara closed his right eye and placed his two index finger, uh, index finger, over his closed eyelid. As black sand begins to form into a small, well, mm -hmm. into a small object as a eyeball appeared hovering in the, uh, hovering above the ground. This is one of the techniques he, he somehow knows that's only unique to only Gara, Allowing Gara to see anything in his third eye feel a field of vision as it flies off to spy on the incoming group of people heading towards his direction. Soon, mother, I will feed you their blood. As the slave traders near the unreal uh, the slave traders ain't unaware that they're being watched as they're heading towards the oasis to fill up their water bottles before they head back to their camp. As Gar is currently hiding behind one of the trees in the oasis, watching them approach the oasis and begin, and begin to fill up their water bottles. 
while they're laughing with each other, giving their horses some time to drink some water and take a rest before they move on. The moment they decided to get a few hours of sleep to recover some of their strength and stamina and travel back, back to their base, that was the perfect time to strike as Gara created his black sand black sand leap at the patrol the only slave trader that isn't currently asleep as it as it engulfs the, the man as the man begins to float upwards levitating above the ground we're all woken up from their from their slumber to see a small red haired redhead boy looking upwards towards towards them with with no emotion in his on his face as by now the rest of the flavors were engulfed in the black sand from the neck neck down below everything from his neck to down below only thing, only thing that's not covered by the sand is their faces. Gara finally spoken. Mother wants your blood. Gara extended his hand outwards towards the men floating in the air, covered in sand, and simply said a single phrase. Sand coffin. As Gara closes his fist, sand burial. As the sand twists every slave, flavor that was hovered above the ground, killing them instantly, as the only thing left is blood. Give me a second. Gara killed every single one of the slavers except the extra lookout that escaped his notice. As the man is shivering behind a tree, Gara took notice to the man finally when he ran and jumped into one of the onto one of the horses and booked it out of the area. Gara closed his eye to create his third eye once again to follow his victim back to their camp. Gara simply followed the man back to, to his home base to give his mother more blood. On a note to Gora, Gara, he isn't the only one heading towards the enslavement camp. Black Adam and his wife, Adriana, or AKA Isis, as she's well, as, as the title she's known for. Adriana. After speaking, I am Isis. Into the incarnation. To the god of Isis. That has similar power to Black Adam, Shazam, like super strength, endurance, super speed, flight as well as other powers that's unique only to her. Like healing abilities and control over nature, like, like the weather and flowers. Gara might have a small chocolate reserve, but in truth, it's still quite large for someone his age. Gara has plenty of chakra to use the sand coffin technique several times and a few other that he's able to utilize current um, in his current state. Gara never questioned, or Gara never once questioned how exactly he knows all these abilities. Like they're like, uh, like, it, like it's second nature to, to him. After following the fleeing, scared and petrified slave trader on horseback, Gara deactivated his third eye when he saw the man ride into the enslavement camp on horseback. As you can see Isis and Black Adam floating 
uh, oh, floating in the air above the enslavement camp. I believe we found their little nest, my love. Husband, dear, I believe it would be best if we locate the prisoners. We need to locate our people first before we deal with these slavers. I agree, Adriana, or Adriana. I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, but that's not that's not really important right now. Let's continue. Those fools will regret kidnapping my civilians. This is notice a small child with red hair enter the encampment. Look down. Look at him down there. As she points to the small boy, it's a child doing here. The moment those words were said, sand erupted, attacking everything that moved. As sand spear shot out, oh, shot out, out of the black sand, impaling several of the slave traders against any wooden structures inside the camp. Mother wants all your blood. You will feed mother. No one will escape. You all are going to die. As a huge black sand construct in the shape of a huge fist slammed down onto a group of slavers, a humongous sand fist lifted off the ground, only revealing a puddle of blood and crushed bone in its place. Gara, com Gara completely ignored all the people in the cages. They were the lucky ones. Anyone else that wasn't in the cages was going to be brutally murdered without no remorse. Without no remorse. Sam begins to swirl around Gara. As Gara announce his attack. Sand shower barrage. As a small shots of shit sand shoot out towards like bullets, beginning to hit beginning to hit the slavers in the chest, leaving small holes in their body, as they drop to the floor dead, leaking blood from their wounds. With one wave of, of his hand, he caught one of the slavers in the grass this, well, and this grasp of his hand engulping him as, as, as Gara used the sand coffin ability to engulf the man without even saying a word he cr crunched his fist as the man was crushed to death nothing but a spot of blood on the sand ground. We'll all feed mother. Gara noticed shots of, of lightning killing the remainder of the slavers as Black Adam and his wife Isis or Adriana descent down into the encampment. Gara didn't take long to act as he as he saw the two arri new arrivals as a threat. The wave of black sand hit Black Adam and Adriana, or Adriana, into several buildings in the encampment. They were unprepared by the fast pace of the sand to dodge properly. They just, uh, they, their guard were down. About time Black Adam and his wife recovered and returned to the middle of the campment. There was no sign of the little red haired boy, like he just vanished in thin air. Garo reappeared somewhere in the desert in a swirl of sand. Garo returned to the cave to recover some of his strength as he opened his backpack up from all the food he took before he left the slave camp. After he ate and fell asleep in the sand, well, fell asleep. Sand in the chamber of the cave. Gara's own sand 
proceed to create a small black sand dome over him while he sleep, only leaving a small hole so air could circulate. As you see Black Adam and his wife Isis guide the civilians back to their kingdom. After Black Adam made sure that the civilians got the that got cap well, that got captured. Received the proper medical care and made it back home. As he sat down on his throne by his his wife by his side. What's your opinion on what happened at that at that camp? That boy has strange abilities that I've never seen before. The power to control sand itself, most intriguing. How would a boy be there in the first place? Where was his parents? He clearly wasn't a prisoner. I don't know. There was no sign of anyone besides the slavers and the civilians that were captured. He's not one of our people, that's for certain. Red hair is a big giveaway. You've never seen black sand before, husband, have you? Well, that's the first time I've seen black sand as well. It seems whoever this kid is able to produce it, but what I've seen so far. I have no doubt we'll meet him again. But he's sure quick to attack though. Isis walked away to do her own duty. There's a lot of things she has to do as as queen. Weeks went by, no sighting of the small red-headed child. In truth, there were sightings of the boy, but no one was left alive to tell the tale. Gara has been attacking and killing several slave encampments to feed their blood to his mother. As you see Gara in a half-destroyed slave, uh, slave encampment, as he has the leader of this camp in a sand coffin, coffin covering his body from his foot to his neck, in black sand, mother wants your blood. Sand burial. As the sand engulfed the slaver entirely, as you can hear a crunch noise, as the sand began to fall, only leaving a puddle of blood, as Gara searched around the encampment, finding a map to all to all the locations of this slavers are located all across the desert. Gara's black sand shot out and grabbed one of the apples nearby and made it in as the sand slowly moved towards Gara and placed the apple in his hand. As Gar begins to eat the fruit and, con and continue to look around the camp for more resources like water, food, and some normal clothing. He eventually found some, nothing special but rags, but it's efficient enough. After he put his clothes on, well after he deactivated and put his clothes on, he turned the sand in, he turned, he turned his clothes back into sand that he had prior as he fully put his new outfit on and begin to travel to the next location on the map as you see Gara in the middle of a well in the middle of the night walking up a large hill of sand when he got to the top Gara gazed down below to a decent sized camp about the size of a small town in one, of, in, in one of the many outposts that's, uh, that's located in the desert in, contr in control of the slavers. Black sand begins to fall off of Gara's skin out of his pearl, pearls 
pearls uh, from you know the pearls from from his skin basically what I'm trying to say it's a black sand slowly construct a shape into a wolf Gara has no idea what these creatures what these creatures he made them of made them of he saw one in one of his dreams he would get a glimpse of his original memories of his first life he only saw flashes of it images of different animals and people not entire full memories but just flashes enough without even looking at the sand wolves Gara spoke mother wants their blood kill anyone that gets in your way I'll be down shortly when it comes to Gara's sand constructs that is that he creates in the form of animals they have enough intelligence to follow orders at the end of the day they're still sand they really don't have any intelligence outside of just following orders Gara hasn't mastered this ability the way of using his sand to form into creatures but with some but uh, but with the crap uh, but with proper practice he'll be able to he'll be able to prove improve on to the technique when he found out he's able to create shapes from sand he got the idea from one of his dreams to create animals practice it was enough so so it would be effective in battle you see the four black sand wolves made of black sand stalk in the shadow in the shadows lurking towards the encampment the wolf's body are made of hardened sand including in their mouth making the hard sand into teeth Gara made a sandstorm to cover the wolf's construct approach to the encampment when the wolves got close enough they lunge at the two lookouts in front of the main gate that the whole camp the whole encampment is gated all around the two wolves bite down into the neck and dragging the slavers into the sandstorm as the sandstorm is blocking out the blocking out the screams of the two men Gara arrives in front of the gate with his two wolves as Gara and his wolves turn back into black sand as the sand slowly moves underneath the gate and reassemble the moment Gara resembled his form into his normal wheel body after he made himself sand immediately ordered his wolves to begin their bloodbath know what to do mother wants their blood go the four black sand wolves vaulted further into the encamp outpost beginning to sink um sneak into tents and killing the people inside while the while they were sleeping Everyone else is not current sleeping at this current time is enjoying themselves drinking near the main fire pit in the outpost as the slavers are having them having themselves a little bonfire they were too busy enjoying themselves to realize their comrades were being killed in a dead of night Gara controlled the sand in a in the nearby area to create a pillar of sand as Gara gets a better look of the encampment from a higher height and start to control more of the sand outside of the outpost in a wave of sand heading directly towards the bonfire smothering the fire making it pitch black 
gaming chain, the light of the large light source, making the remaining flavors on edge. As one of the flavors was grabbed out of nowhere by by a, by um by sand, as he was yanked into the air, falling to his death when he finally landed. The was immediately grab firm on their firearms and on sheets and several of them have curved swords. Flavors might not be able to see, but that doesn't Gara one bit. He can sense a small amount of chakra in their body, telling him all their location. As Gara is a sensor, Gara might not be able to see in the dark, but he doesn't need to to find his victims. As the pillar of sand slowly turn into stairs for Gara to step down. As Gara finally stepped foot onto the ground level and created several sand spheres and tossed them into the in, into the shadows, piercing several slavers in the head. As Gara shot out, well Gara heard gunshots, so he made a sand as a sand dome, or well, half a dome formed in front of Gara, blocking all, blocking all the gunshot rounds from the uh, from the assault rifles. As the sand hardened itself to withstand the force of the bullet, the force of the bullet, the sand dome shot out hardened sand spikes in all direction when Gara stopped hearing rifle fire. He dropped his sand shield as he heard several engines starting to 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 rev as several jeeps begin to drive through the camp trying to get out of the, uh, trying to get to the exit. Gara sees three vehicles heading towards the direction, towards the exit, as a huge, huge sand spike shot from underneath one of the vehicles, piercing, piercing the driver, killing the driver, driver instantly. Unfortunately, Gara couldn't finish off the other two, as the cars drove, well, the basically jeeps drove past Gara. Gara called him called upon on one of his wolves as all three of the wolves returned back to sand. As Gara leaving only one sand wolf and hopped onto the hopped onto the back of the wolf and gave chase. as a huge sand wave come raining down onto the outpost the moment Gara left, killing any survivors that he might have left, covering the whole area in sand. Gara could see the two jeeps that escaped coming into view. When the sand wolf got close enough, it immediately shot out sand bullets out of his mouth piercing the tire of, of the jeep, making it making the jeep lose control. Well, Gara slammed the jeep with a wave of sand on the side, making the jeep land into a quicksand pit. About time the man figured out what was going on. It was already too late. He, uh, he was already, he was, uh, he's pretty, he's, gar he's guaranteed to die, regardless. Gara passed the jeep on the wolf's back. A wave of sand covered the jeep, burying it with the quicksand. 
About time when Gara refocused on the remaining jeep ahead. He had to stop. He stopped in a skid across the sand. Gara hopped off hopped off the wolf. As the wolf dissipated back into sand, traveling back towards Gara. As Gara absorbed the black sand back into and back back into his body. Gara watched the Jeep enter one of the one of the cities. One of the cities that's scattered all around Egypt. It's a medium sized city, not as big as the capital, but big enough to get lost through the crowd. Garo was walking towards the city only for his black sand to form a wall between him and the city, confusing Gara as he tilts his head to the side. What do you mean? It's not a good idea, mother. Don't you want their blood? As the wall of black sand form into a hand, as the sand hand point towards the well, towards the guard tower, well, the, the large, well, tall sniper towers all across the city, with well armed men guarding the entryway to the city. Garo decided to, to not enter the city and head back towards the desert, walking through the incoming sandstorm, disappearing in the distance. Because of Gara's prey managing to escape into the city like a mad mad ranting about a sand demon, the man was erratic. He eventually was arrested and eventually placed in a mental ward for his own safety and safety of, safety of others as the man is very unstable, saying one phrase over and over again. As you see in a man in a straight jacket in a white padded room ranting about a sand demon over and over again like a madman months has passed there's been more sightings of a red hair boy every time he disappear there's always massive death are involved the general population of Egypt start to refer Gara as the sand demon of Egypt as terror ran ran rapid all across Egypt. As Gara killed so many slavers and destroyed many of their outposts in the vast desert, they all relocated back to their main base and buckled down. The deserts became too dangerous with the sand demon of Egypt roaming free. Even the bandits have been keeping a low profile. The moment the slavers felt at ease and not worry about being attacked, Gara approached from the distance across the landscape. Gara has singled out the slavers and killed so many of their uh, of their numbers. They have whittled down to only a few hundred remaining alive during Gara's rampage across the desert. The rumors going around Egypt, if you ever come across a small child with red hair with some sort of red, red tattoo above his right eye to run and flee for your life. Most people tried to avoid going into the desert ever since the sand demon became well known across, across the, de a desolated, uh, the desolated land of Egypt. Gara decided a few days ago to venture further into the desert. During his travels, he came across... I skipped ahead a little bit. Let's get back on track. As Gara crushed the the slaver base with a huge wave of sand killing everyone instantly Gara decided a few days ago to venture further deeper into the desert after the destruction 
of the enslavement camp. During his travels, he came across a scene of a young desert fox being surrounded by hyenas that roamed the Nile. What guard did next would have surprised anyone. He didn't quite understand it himself, so he proceeded to smoothly and quickly kill all the all of the all of the hyenas in sand as he approached the injured injured desert fox and scooped it up and scooped the desert fox up to his arms as he continued his path until he came across a old campsite at a at a oasis near a small water source though this oasis was a lot smaller than the prior one he visited. Well, prior to the one Gara visited before. Sometime a, mo oh, sometime a month ago, Gara found a old bro broken cup and filled it up with water and put it in front of the snout of the desert fox for it to drink. When he noticed the fox is drinking, Gara sat down while holding the fox leaning against one of the trees, using his third eye to hunt for some meat for the small animal that he has in his arms. Gar doesn't know why he's taking care of this small animal, but there's one thing he does know. Mother doesn't want his blood. This is the first time since his birth he showed affection towards another living creature. Every everything else prior to this point that got in his way was brutally killed. Regardless if they're human animal, it didn't matter. If mother wants your blood, you are surely gonna die in the most brutal way possible. Gara Sandwolf came back with his fresh kill. Gave a good portion of of the kill to the small fox and cook and cook the rest for his portion. Gara decided to bunker down it on this spot for a while. They're pretty deep into the forest. It's, a, it's extremely rare that Gara would come across people outside of the bandits and the bandits been keeping to themselves. So he left them alone. Several weeks has passed as Gara and his little fox friend live in the little o o oasis quite and quite peacefully. Gara stared down at the little fox as the fox yipped at him as his as his leg was has been finally healed. You fox, stay. I'll be back. Surprisingly, the fox did what it was told as Gara explode, or explored the nearby area. He just felt that he needed to go deeper into the desert. He doesn't know why. It's like a base instinct in him, telling him to venture further, further into the desert. Ignoring several bandit camps in the area, That usually occupied area for base of operation when they raid transports when the city needs to restock their supplies it's a perfect place to have a headquarters and uh, orchestrate ambushes hidden uh, hit and run guerrilla warfare warfare Gara made his way back to the oasis where he left the desert fox at he was in a he was in a hurry to get back. He found some food that he thought the small fox were, uh, were, uh, would enjoy. <coughs> <coughs> he arrived at the oasis. He noticed a small amount of blood on the, on the ground. He saw a trail of blood leading to a group of, group of men. As Gara's eyes widen as he sees a bandit grabbed the scruff of the fox neck 
and toss it. The fox tried to lunge for his throat. When the, when the bandit got too close, Goro ran up to the small fox and saw the fox is staying still, not emotionless on the ground. When the fox hit the tree, it snapped its neck, killing it instantly. Or falls down to his knees while the bandits were laughing. Gara's bangs blocking, blocking their view of his face, giving him a very shadow ex expression. Gar has been growing long enough, so he's covering his eyes. He never had a desire to cut it, so he let it grow. Gar is going through several different emotions as he felt pain in his heart. That pain swiftly turned into sorrow. That sorrow instantly turned into pure rage. As black sand erupts around Gara, swirling around him in a violent motion. As all the bandits stop laughing. A couple of them had enough brain cells to know that they need to escape with their lives intact. Gara had the dead fox in his arms as he placed it gently onto the ground. And stood up glaring at the bandits. In the first time in his life, he felt pure hatred towards suffering. Everything that's been happening until now has only been feeding his mother. First time in his life, he truly wants to kill someone. As Black Sand struck like a viper around all of them, all at once, Except the ones that have, were smart enough to get away. So San engulfed almost all of them except one. The one that hasn't been covered in the sand as the sand is currently covering his ankles. A good portion of his leg. Well, as the bandits that have been engulfed in the sand cough immediately were crushed. Crushed to death. Except for except for the only one left alive. But unfortunately for him, this bandit would wish he was crushed to death like his comrades. As the man screams out in pain, and he fell to the ground, onto his stomach, when his ankles were, were crushed by the black sand, Gara slowly approached the injured man and began shooting sand spears into the man's body, purposely Piercing different parts of the man body to extend his suffering. Killing the only living creature that he's ever shown affection to. He's gonna make sure he's he's gonna make sure he's gonna torture torture the man. Tan blanketed him. Immediately crushed the man to death. As Gara used his third eye to locate the others, one that, uh, that managed to escape. It took him several minutes to locate the escaping bandits to a large bandit fortress. As the floating eye is gazing on the running bandits entering the front gate of the fortress. Found you. As Gara has a sinister smile on his face. Let's go, mother. For the very first time, he didn't use his most repeated phrase that he says when he kills someone. For the very first time, he, does, he doesn't care. He doesn't. He, currently, he doesn't care if mother wants their blood. He wants to kill them. Brianna is hovering in the sky, staring down at the small red boy with a sad expression on her face. Seen the events that just transpired. She's been watching over him for weeks now. For about four weeks now. She's been hiding her presence so the young boy doesn't notice. Notice. Considered how violent the young man can be. 
as she follow as she follows him as he makes his way over to the bandit fortress. Got him. Flew flew in and stopped right beside his wife. As husband and wife float in the air, I figured I would find you here. We should have acted before. If we allow this to continue, that small child will end up becoming a monster. I should have made contact with the boy once I found him. You could have, but that might have had. No, but I highly doubt that would make a difference. That child is extremely hostile towards anything that moves. Until that fox came around, he's been very docile. But I suppose you're right. If we allow this boy with his own devices, who knows what type of monster would be born from the harsh nature of the desert. But I gotta say, I'm impressed. The young boy's been surviving. Let's follow him. Shouldn't we stop him before he gets there? No point in that, my dear. We, if we interfere, he'll most likely attack on sight. And they're only bandits after all. Those bandits are gonna die regardless if our intervention or not. And this is a good chance to gauge his threat level. If things don't go our way, I need to gauge his threat level. He might even become a major problem if he ever targets our kingdom. Gara has finally arrived at the bandit base. Gara, uh, Gara Sand activated on his own, protecting him from really hardening itself to block the incoming gunfire. That is raining down on Gara. As two humongous sand claws erupt from the ground and dig into the gate and ripping it off the hinges. As the sand hand, hand claws toss the gate as it goes flying past Gara. With one wave of Gara's hand, a wave of sand came flying through the base. As you can see sand sharks, constructs, popping out of the sand and chomping down on any bandit that they get their hands on. As the shark would, the sand shark would immediately dove into the, right back into the sand, like it's water. Black Adam watches this transpire. Amazing. He has that much control? I knew it. I had a feeling he could control any type of sand. But to control sand to this extent, for being oh for him being so young, is most impressive. Even even if he's fighting against simple bandits, it's still quite a show. If you don't get smothered by the sand, you'll definitely get eaten by the sand sharks constructs. Kind of reminds me of those constructs you see from the Green Lanterns. I must agree with you. It's most impressive. But it uh, but it looks like it's making him quite tired, judging by his breathing. So you see Gara breathing heavy. From this, uh, this extent of sand manipulation is draining his chakra extremely well, extremely fast. Sand wave and sand sharks fall to the ground. Ara raised up his hand and uttered his signature attack, Sand Coffin. As everyone in the fortress 
get engulfed and hovered in the air. Engulfed into the, into the sand coffin. Only stopping from their neck. Die, sand burial. As immediately all the bandits were crushed at all the same time. Blood begins to rain down on the fortress. As you see Gar in the middle of the fortress. As blood beginning to cover his entire body. Gar is totally exhausted from using so much of, from, of so much of his chakra. His, his reserves is beginning to almost be be yeah, well, his reserves are almost empty. As Gar begins to fall unconscious, as begins to fall to the ground, only for Adriana to peer in front of him, grab him, and catch him before he hit the ground. As Black Adam descends down to the ground himself. Ah, you little one. Rest. As Gara falls unconscious. As this is where we're going to stop it, guys. Hope you guys have a good night and day. Judge by time zones. And I'll catch you in the next video.